How's it going today? My name is Josh at your local Russo Power Equipment. Uh, today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to change a chain on some of your basic uh, chainsaw bars. Um, first things first, I do have to mention uh, always you know, wear safety glasses and gloves, especially when you're going to be dealing with uh, sharp stuff like these chainsaw blades. You don't want to be getting your hands cut up. So uh, always got your safety glasses. Um, some thick gloves that will help against getting cut will be uh, ideal in this situation here. So we'll get those going. Alright, um, as most equipment with a chainsaw here, it's very important that the engine's not live when you're going to be working on it. Um, probably take care of that, like on you know, your string trimmers, lawnmowers as well. Um, we're just gonna, we're gonna disconnect the spark plug. On this model, it's pretty easy. You see there's two levers here, one to release this shroud, and this one here is your choke control. Um, first thing we're gonna do is just kind of get that out of the way there by pushing that all the way to the down position. Um, it may vary per chainsaw, but you know, for this one, this is pretty universal. We're gonna loosen up that nut there and just slide this cover off. Kind of see, it give you another angle in there. Um, your air filter, your spark plug is gonna be on top here. You can kind of see the top view of it. Um, first thing we're gonna do here is just pop off the air filter. It's two tabs, clips in there nice and easily. One on each side there. And then uh, this, this shroud here, we just gotta pop that up. And that gives us act, full access to the spark plug. As far as the air filter goes, you can just set this stuff aside for now. Um, there's not really uh, a difference from your lawnmowers and string trimmers here like I always show you. Just kind of pull that off there. Once there's no connection, the engine will not run. There's no electricity. Um, I like to call it a dead engine. The engine is no longer live. So next step in changing the chain, now that the engine's, you know, everything's safe and we can get our hands in there, we're going to remove the scabbard so we can get access to the chain. Um, when changing a chain, I don't recommend engaging this chain brake. So we're going to pull that to the back position, um, allowing relief of tension on the chain. First step I'm going to take here is actually just loosen up these bar nuts. Get it kind of, you know, once, once you can spin them with your fingers, that's a pretty good uh, sign that they're loose enough. Um, same tool that they give you with your chainsaw, I call it a scrunch. We're going to take the flathead end and just relieve this little screw here. And as you can see, the chain will drop. Um, what this screw does on many different brands of chainsaws, um, that relieves tension of the bar. Um, allowing to, you know, that gives us an extra inch or so to work with the bar and chain. Um, so now I go ahead and just spin these off. They should be finger loose already. Get all this stuff out of the way for now so you guys can see in there. Remove that cover. Um, for now, since the tension is relieved off the bar and chain, we're just going to go ahead and pop that off of there by lifting up and kind of pulling back on it. See it kind of all comes off as one piece there. Uh, makes it a little bit easier. Some people prefer to take off the chain first, however you're more comfortable doing it is fine. So we're going to go ahead and just pop this chain off of there. Um, I will show you guys the way the chain faces. I know you're probably thinking that to yourself sitting at home on the computer. Well, which way does the chain face? I'll be sure to show you that. Um, so I got a new chain here. Um, I do know it's the proper part number. Uh, if you ever have any questions, you could always call us and verify with one of our parts associates that you're getting the right part. Um, there are many different sizes that can you know, damage a chainsaw if you're not getting the right one. So we'll go ahead. You saw how that one came off of there. We're just going to put this one back on the same way, kind of one piece. Um, so when you install it, there's not too many tricks to that. Kind of get it on there. Now as I told you, you're probably thinking to yourself, hey, which way should the chain run down the bar? Now if you noticed, um, the sharp end is running down the bar. So when this is on the saw, this is going to be moving like this. So that that cutting edge can grab into the wood. So once you got that chain on there the right way, I'm going to go ahead and uh, attach it all to the bar there, kind of fit it in the groove. Kind of take that. Um, now that there's no tension on here, this should just go actually on the same way you took it off. Uh, fit the chain around the clutch there. And that bar will kind of just snap into place there. We're just going to get this cover on there, make sure it clicks in all around, and just kind of finger spin these bars on there. Sorry, these bar nuts. Alright, 
Now once you got this on there, finger tight, that's plenty for now. Um, it is very important that you do not over tighten this. Um, reason I have you put that on there is going to hold everything in place for you while you're you know, getting the proper tension on the chain. Um, now once again we want to do make sure that chain brake is disengaged, otherwise it will not tension. Um, go ahead with that same flathead we loosened it up with. We're going to go ahead and just kind of give that a quick twist. And what that's doing is actually pulling the bar away from the saw, putting tension on the chain. So once you get that pretty, pretty tensioned, not too much. Um, you want it to stretch a little bit, but not be loose, uh, if you want to put it that way. Um, that's pretty good tension there. We're going to go ahead and just kind of finish spinning on these bar nuts with the other end of this scrunch. And uh, a good way to check the tension, once you get everything tightened up, it should be able to spin freely without binding. Uh, a good way to check that without cutting yourself is just take this scrunch, get it behind one of your teeth, and it should be able to spin that freely like so. So once that's good, um, check your tension. You know, you want it to be just enough so you could kind of pick it up and drop it down without actually pulling the chain off the bar. Um, we are going to go ahead and now we're going to close all this, all this stuff back up. Um, first step in doing that is just take that spark plug glue, press that right back on the spark plug. Once you hear it click, you're good. Um, kind of reverse steps from the beginning here. We're going to take this piece here, it has two tabs on it, um, you'll see where it locks in there. We're just going to set that right back in there. Keep the spark plug separate from the air filter. And then air filter, how you unclicked it, that's going to just click right back in there, same way it came out. So you're just going to set that down. Once you hear a click, you're good. Last but not least, this last shroud just slides right over the handle. Clicks in place. We're going to twist this right here. Um, that attaches the case back to the shroud. And pull your choke lever back up. That was in the down position to allow room for that. And you are all set. Um, now, when you go to start the unit, obviously we do recommend you push this forward. Um, that is the chain brake and that will keep it from, from uh, the chain spinning when you start the unit, which can obviously uh, propose kind of a safety hazard. So, um, you know, put your scabbard back on the bar so no one gets cut and you will be all set. Have a great day.